Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at Dormobile. And I also seem to have been transported back to 1972 when the average UK house price was £4,000 and a pint of beer was 14p. And camper vans, well they look like this classic Type 2, a Dormobile D46. Now in 1972 I was six years old so I hadn't quite grown this beard yet or grown a fascination for camper vans. That came just a very short few years later when friends of my parents had vans like this one. This is a Bedford CF, a Dormobile Freeway. Again, from 1972, at a time when Dormobile in Folkestone in Kent was churning out so many camper vans that its name was almost a generic name like Hoover or Thermos for camper vans. Now, a lot of water has gone under the bridge since then, but Dormobile is now back. Back with a new site in the New Forest and back with a new range of camper vans. In fact, this resurrected Dormobile brand has been based in Lyndhurst in the New Forest for the last three years and actually restores old camper vans as well as building a range of brand new ones on the T6.1 Volkswagen, Ford Transit Custom, Peugeot Boxer, the Land Rover Defender, the old classic Defender and now on the MAN. So despite those initial appearances, this is very much a 21st century camper van business, building around 150 to 200 camper vans a year, and all of them, if they're on new base vehicles, fully type approved. But this is their new flagship model, the Balin Tray, and I've got the keys. It's hot off the press, Let's go. So we've just left Dormobile and we're straight into the heart of the new forest. And well, for a start, this is an area that brings back as many memories for me as the name Dormobile, because I spent a lot of time down here as a kid. But also, it's great to be back behind the wheel of an MAN. I never have dreamed of MAN, the big lorry manufacturer making camper van based vehicles when I was down here as a kid. But the one thing you can be sure of with these MAN TGEs is that they are a super vehicle to drive. Of course it's the sister van to the crafter, swap the uh, VW Roundel for this Lion and it's the same van. So you've got the choice of 140 bhp engine or 177. This is the 140 but it has been upgraded to the 8 speed automatic gearbox and that's a torque converter gearbox not a twin clutch DSG like you get in a transporter. But it is super smooth and well this crafter. Well, there's a T6, and what does this feel like on the road but a big brother to the T6? It's got that same quality about it, that same sophistication, and it feels so, so much more modern than a Fiat Ducato or a Peugeot Boxer. Features on this particular model, well, um, you've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but you can see, I mean, that links to my phone absolutely brilliantly, not, it's wireless connection, um, so you've got instant sat-nav on there. Um, that screen does your reversing camera as well, DAB radio, of course, and your sat-nav instructions are actually repeated in the main screen between the rev counter and the speedo as well. 
This is the 140 engine, which is more than adequate. In fact, when I first drove it, I thought, oh, this must be the 177, but no, it's the 140, and it is very good. Handling is excellent. I just wish, as ever, there are a few less rattles. There aren't too many, but there are a few rattles which seem to be coming from the kitchen here, and I can't seem to silence them. But, uh, as I say, not, not uh, too bad but there are a few. Now I should add that these cab seats are really really comfortable. There's a tilt adjustment on the squab cushion so you can get a bit of lift under your legs for a bit more support. There's lumbar adjustment too. Oddly the passenger seat has two armrests but the driver's seat only gets one but that's not a great issue and the handbrake is of course in the conventional central position although you do have to release it when swivelling the driver's chair. And now we're about to arrive at our campsite, the Caravan and Motorham Club's centenary site here in the forest. So this is the Domobile Balin Tray. The second model that the company has launched on this 5.99 metre long standard wheelbase MAN TGE. So the MAN Ahana came first. That was very much, if you like, a T6 that had grown up. So still with a side kitchen layout, no washroom, a little bit more affordable than this one. But this now, the Ballon Tray, is the company's top of the range model. Full washroom, fixed bed pop-top roof which you'll see in a second isn't that beautifully merged into the man bodywork well as I say this is the company's new flagship let's see what you get with a starting price of £99,000 well one thing you don't get which makes a nice change is a list of options as long as your arm no this pack living pack seating pack wheels pack door pack no packs at all. The only options on this vehicle, the automatic gearbox, that's £3,000. These LED headlights, they're £1,272. And while the vehicle does come with alloy wheels as standard, these black 18-inch wheels with the Dormobile logo, they are an optional upgrade at £1,368. So, total, as you see it here, everything, including the awning, metallic paint, all the rest of it, 104,640. So the dimensions 5.99 metres long as I say 2.99 metres high and 2.04 metres wide. It's on a 3,500 kilo or three and a half ton chassis so you can drive it on a standard car licence and that gives you a payload of 365 kilos. What else can I tell you? Well, the glazing is all very automotive. None of the double glazed plastic windows that you get on larger motorhomes and on some camper vans. So these are glass, single glazed and obviously tinted, but they have got sliding opening sections on both sides. And then to match the glazing, you've got these flares or bulged panels on each side at the back where the bed is. And you need those in the Crafter or the MAN to give you enough width um, to sleep across the vehicle. The bulge on the off side is even more noticeable than this one. Sliding door, of course, on the UK side because the Dormobile is bought, built in the UK. Now, I should say that Dormobile works slightly differently to other manufacturers in that it isn't really a manufacturer. It designs the vehicles and then puts the construction out to other independent converters who then build them. All built in the UK and this, when it's in production, will have full European type approval. So, back to the sliding door. Conventional sliding door, but when you open it, the electric step pops out automatically. It's quite a big door and I did find just a few times I didn't close it first time so maybe they would like to offer the electric soft closing mechanism as an option that might be quite a nice thing to have on a premium vehicle like this. Water tanks are underneath, fresh water is 65 litres and the waste which you can see down here with a nice sturdy tap to 
empty it. That is 40 litres. So tanks are a little bit on a small side for such a premium vehicle. But gas, well, no lugging gas cylinders because you've got a built-in gas tank. That is filled down here. That's a 25 litre underslung gas tank. And also, avoiding cutting unnecessary holes in the vehicle, you've got your mains hookup point under the rear bumper. Very sensibly, the Dormobile also has a full-size spare wheel under the back of the van, where for once it's not buried so far that you won't ever want to get it out. But more importantly, perhaps at the back, the barn doors open right round and you have this vast garage space, 1.72 metres wide at the end here, uh, 1.29 metres maximum depth and 93 centimetres high. And they've even clipped the awning winding rail neatly out of the way. There is also internal access into the garage, which could be useful if, say, you want to put dog crates in here. Just bear in mind that whatever you're storing in here, you will need to retain access to this servicing hatch for your cassette toilet. Over on the off side here, you've got your fresh water filler and then your attachment for the external shower. Now another feature of the garage is these little shelves, ideal for your toilet chemical, your levelling wedges, that sort of thing. And the garage area does gain space from the fact that, unlike a lot of vehicles in this class, you haven't got an inboard water tank in this area. Unfortunately, of course, the downside of that is it's less suitable for winter camping. This is more of probably a three-season van with that pop-top and the underslung tanks. But it is also a van that is designed for off-grid use because in here, all you've, you've got all your vehicle electrics or your habitation electrics together and you've got a 105 amp hour lithium battery, your Victron charging unit and a 12 100 watt inverter. So you can even use mains appliances when you're not hooked up to the mains. And there's also a 200 watt solar panel mounted on the pop top. An interesting option that's sadly lacking on this particular van is to have outdoor chairs and a table that store in bespoke pouches on these back doors. Add those and combined they come to about 1200 pounds. The other thing I'd like to see is some power points in this garage. There's no 12 volt or 230 volt socket anywhere in this zone. Time now then to show you the pop top roof. And this is very easy. There are just two of these catches to do, one on each side release those and then it's easiest if you stand on the seat and give it a good push. Of course up here you've also got an adult sized double bed, 2.04 meters long, that's 6 foot 8, by 1.18 meters wide or 3 foot 10 and a half. So really good bed on a nice thick mattress you will get a ladder for access in the production vehicles that just hadn't arrived in time for our test. But they also need to think about adding a child safety net at the front of the bed. What you do get is a couple of reading lights with USBs at the front of this upstairs area. And also a storage pocket which will be useful perhaps for putting pillows when you put the roof down so that they're neatly stored away. And I think you get away with putting a sleeping bag or two on the bed when you put the roof down because there does seem to be enough space. Of course, if you're in the south of France or you have one of those wonderful British days that comes along occasionally, you can open up the roof in this full scenic fashion and really get some fresh air. So that was the roof bed. But of course, you've got another double bed here at the back of the van above the garage. And it's 1.88 metres long, 
thanks to those pods on the side by 1.21 meters wide. In old money, six foot two by just under four foot, three foot 11 and a half. Back here, well, you access the bed with a ladder which clips onto the inside of that internal garage door. It would be nice perhaps to have some fold out steps rather than a ladder, but it's easy enough to get up here. And once you're up here, you've got these blue mood lights in the ceiling. You've got a dimmable LED strip. Just press to control the brightness of that above the head. You've got these reading lights with USBs built in, same as the ones up in the over, over the cab in the uh, roof bed area. But the best thing of all is, for once, there's room to sit up. No cupboards at this end, just cupboards over the foot of the bed. Well done, Dormerville. So not only can you comfortably sit in bed and read your copy of MMM, of course, all our videos are brought to you by MMM Magazine, Britain's leading motorhome magazine for, well, well over 50 years now. And you can buy it in print or digital form. Enough of that. Um, privacy back here or blackout is by curtains. Unfortunately, none of the windows, or the, the only windows in this area, are the ones in the back door and they don't open. You can't have a roof vent or roof light because you've got the pop top above. So we could really do with some little opening sections, perhaps in these pods at the side. But the really, really good thing, apart from the fact you can sit up in bed, is that this bed is on Froley plastic springs and it is so comfy. Really didn't want to get up to film this video this morning. I spent a lot of time talking about the back end of this camper van. What about up front? Well, in a way, it's much as you'd expect in that you've got swivel cab seats, sort of half the net bench, and a wall-mounted table. But you've got full headroom right into the cab because it's on an MAN, so there's no over-cab shelf like you see in some of the Fiat's and Peugeot's. Again, you've got glass side windows with curtains. Um, that is an opening sliding window, but of course no fly screen on there. And there's no fly screen on the sliding door either. Table is fine for two people, but if there's more of you, it could do with one of those swing out extension leaves. Cab seats are just as comfortable on site as they are for driving, really, really nice and beautifully appointed in this real leather trim with the diamond stitching and of course the Dormobile D logo. But the other thing that is really key is over here, the other side of the table, you have a very, very comfortable rear travel seat. And that's because it is a proper automotive seat, as you'd find, say, in the cab of a MAN or Crafter van. Properly shaped, properly tested, proper automotive seating. And you might think, well, that's not what I want on site. Well, it's great for rear passengers, but it's also great when you're sitting on site. It's a very comfortable place to be. There's a little bit of storage under the rear seat. Just lift up the base cushions. But part of the area under there is taken by the whale boiler. Now the whale heating system is gas only. That's 3.3 kilowatts output. The boiler is gas and mains electric. Also note that under the table, very conveniently, you've got a main socket, two USBs, and a 12 volt socket. And then back in the kitchen, there's more sockets over here. So let's take a look at the galley now. So there are your kitchen power points, two three pin sockets and two USBs. And above, you've got a very simple, simple to use control panel touch screen for your lights, water levels, turn on your, your gas uh, supply from the gas tank, that sort of thing. Sink. Well, what can I say about the sink apart from wow to this tap when that just 
super tap or whatever. Anyway, Corian worktops and plenty, plenty of worktop in a six metre camper van with a fixed bed. Yeah, really. Plenty of storage too. Maybe there could be more drawers rather than cupboards. You have got one cutlery drawer. Um, rest of the space is cupboard space, but you've got a big shelved cupboard there. More storage back here, but open this one under the sink and in there is your microwave. That's standard equipment, but if you prefer, you can have a gas oven instead. Your other cooking, well that's on typical camper van two burner hob. And then at the end of the unit, discreetly hidden um, behind a cupboard door, which all looks very, very neat, is a 47 litre Dometic compressor fridge. The only downside of hiding it so beautifully is that then, because of the way the doors open, you can't get a beer from outside. You have to come into the van. But if you're prepared to forego the drawer underneath the fridge, you can upgrade to an 80 litre compressor fridge. And if you're envisaging using this as a family van, I think I'd recommend that. And of course, the last thing to show you, the bit you've been waiting for, the scene where I sit on the loo. Well, everything in the kitchen is beautifully finished and the same in here. You've got the same Korean worktops. This very small, sort of one hand at a time basin, but yeah, it's perfectly adequate for washing your hands. I had a really good shower in here this morning too. The only thing is that you do need a better seal on the bottom of the door because some of the water escaped into the aisle. Great not to have a curtain though. What you do need is some ventilation. There's no window or roof vent. Again, you can't have a roof vent because of the pop top above. Swivel cassette toilet, as you'd expect. Um, wooden uh, duckboard on the floor and a decent sized drain in the shower tray. So the only thing you'll need to check out for size and whether you're happy is this width between the wall and the basin, which I think is only about 42 centimeters. So it's quite tight. I mean, you can sit at an angle, but do check out that before you buy. So, final verdict time on this Dormobile Ballin tray, which incidentally is named after a seaside village in Northern Ireland near the Giant's Causeway. Well, it starts off with a huge advantage, this Ballin tray, because, well, it's based on what must be the best base vehicle in its class, the MAN TGE. It's a nice size too. This six metre class of van is so manoeuvrable, not too big, but still able to give you all the facilities of a fixed bed, a proper washroom and so on. I like the finish too. It's generally really nicely finished in here. There's a quality feel about it from the Korean worktops to the Froley springs under the bed. It does feel like a premium camper van. A really good rear travel seat here too and yeah it's it's nicely appointed and not a long list of options to add either although do go for the automatic gearbox that is well worth the three grand the pot top too adds versatility makes it family friendly so you could use it as a two plus two or a family vehicle whenever you need to downsides well yes there are a few there's ventilation issues in the washroom and the rear bedroom. But these are the sort of little details that maybe you come to expect when this and Dormobile may be a long, long established brand, but really this is a new startup of Dormobile and obviously they're gonna learn along the way. If they tweak this model with a few little improvements here and there, they could be onto a winner. I hope you've enjoyed our latest camper van review. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and of course subscribe to the channel.